We're still in this series, if you didn't notice. God hates music, right? Anybody uh, change their mind on this one? Where do you sit this week? Does God hate music? Does God not hate music? Well, nobody seems to be really confident about the answer. I'm okay with that. God doesn't hate music, right? Is that what you settled on? Okay. Nobody's starting to believe the opposite is true. You know, when I originally came up with this uh, sermon series and this idea of the question, it really felt black and white, right? It's like one or the other, right? God either hates music or God doesn't hate music. There's no gray area. But as we move, we moved along. We've made our way through this series. We started to see that uh, God probably doesn't hate music, right? But, but, we've certainly made it hard to love. And for the first time, the very first time, looking at this question, there exists this middle ground of maybe, right? Maybe God does hate music. And maybe doesn't always have to be a bad thing, but our culture and our world have certainly made maybe a bad thing. You know, the other day I was looking online and I saw a wedding invitation with the RSVP section. It said, yes, I will be attending. And it said, no, I can't make it. And then it said, maybe I'll be attending. Now, how do you plan for that? How do you plan for that? Does a catering company just have extra meals on standby? There are just some extra chairs and tables that are they're just ready to go in the corner that you can whip out really, really quickly. What about the seating arrangement? Are there some maybe seats that's, that are next to, to Aunt Jean or maybe Uncle Jose? You put all the maybes at the table where nobody wants to sit. What do you, how do you plan for maybe? But our maybes, they don't stop there. Our maybes extend to every single aspect of our life. You invite a neighbor to a barbecue, right? And it used to be, what do they say? Yes, I'm free. I'll be there. Or no, I've got another obligation. I can't be there, right? That was the answer. But now you invite a neighbor to a barbecue, and what do they say? Well, who's going to be there? And what are we going to eat? And what are we, what are we going to do there? And how, how long is it going to be? Well, maybe. I'm free that day. But just put me down as maybe in case something else comes up, right? The truth is we've become these maybe people, right? We don't fully commit to anything. It's just maybe I'll be there. It's really hard to plan for maybe, right? Maybe I'll come to that event. Maybe I'll come to that worship. Maybe if I feel like it. We don't say that part out loud, right? But we, we carry that in our spirit. If I feel like it. And as a result of our maybes, as a result of our lack of commitment to anything at all, we find ourselves chasing experiences. We chase these perfect moments in our lives, right? These, these perfect experiences, these perfect feelings, right? It's like we're trying to cultivate the perfect life playlist. Right? Everything's got to be perfect. If I, can, if I can organize it to a T, it's going to be the most amazing experience ever, that we're chasing high after high after high after high. But when we're chasing these perfect experiences, we often miss out on the perfect experience. I want you to think in your head to those memories, those perfect moments that you've had in your life. Have they been arranged to a T by you? The best moments that you've had in your life, those moments that you go back to in your head when you've reached a low, you think back, man, it was so good. Man, I was so happy. Was that a situation that you organized, that you made perfect, or did it just happen? Or did God just show up and allow it to happen? The truth is, for most of us, the highs in this life, they come at random moments. They come in moments where we least expect it, right? In these moments where we've relinquished our desire to control the outcome. 
to control the moment and the experience, and we're just present. We're just present with the people that we love. We're just present with the God that we serve. We're just present in the kingdom and the creation of God. And you see, those moments are God-driven. They're not organized and arranged by us. And you may be asking yourself, what does this have to do with worship music? But it has everything to do with music, right? We, we chase experiences in worship, too. We come through these doors, and we want to have a special experience with God. We want to have one of those moments where our soul is ripped open and the Holy Spirit comes down and embraces us and wraps its arms around us and says, you are love. Right? That's what we want to happen. And when it doesn't happen, when it doesn't happen the way that we thought it was going to happen, when it doesn't happen the way that we planned for it to happen, what do we do? What do we say? I missed out on that one. We're disappointed. In fact, sometimes we're a little bit upset. You know, if Cheryl had just picked the song that I wanted to hear that day, I might have had that moment. I might have had that cry that I've been holding all week, hoping that you were going to play Amazing Grace on Sunday, and then you didn't play it. I didn't get that cry. I didn't get to experience God the way that I planned on experiencing God, right? We leave this place and we're just slightly disappointed. And there's a piece of our spirit that says, I bet they played that song somewhere else. I bet they did. I bet they played the playlist that I had arranged in my head. I bet they did that somewhere else. I bet the pastor preached a sermon that I really wanted to hear somewhere else. I bet I could have went somewhere else or even stayed at home and felt better. We do that in our spirits. And that piece of our spirit, that little piece that tugs at us, that's the pursuit of this perfect worship experience, right? Where we truly encounter God. And when we don't encounter God in that way, each and every one of us, whether you acknowledge it or not, we regret our decision to show up here. We regret it. I could have stayed home and could have watched that game. I could have went out and had a great breakfast. I could have laid in bed for a little bit longer. I could have tended to my garden. I could have relaxed on the back porch. I could have went to the swimming pool. I could have camped for an extra day, right? We regret the decision. But here's the thing. The only way that we truly encounter God, that we have that Holy Spirit moment that we crave, is when we surrender moment happens when we allow God to speak to us, when we chase God and not experiences. When we chase God and not experiences. You see, our music, it's a gateway into surrender. And with some songs, that surrender, it's an offering of praise to God. That's it. And with other songs, that surrender is an offering of our very spirits to God. But music, no matter the form, no matter the offering, is always, and mark my words, always an invitation to the presence of God. But if we RSVP anything other than, yes, God, I will be present, Yes, God, I'm available. Yes, God, I will show up. And we don't leave room for God to dwell. We don't leave room for God to show up. You see, music transcends because our commitment to praise is what ultimately shines through. In this series, our guiding thought has been Psalm 100, and it continues to be so. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. And we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. 
So one of the most beautiful things about contemporary Christian music is that there is a machine, right? It's growing into this huge industry that makes music, and as a result, you have a ton of artists that show up, which means you have to have a ton of songs, right? It's very different than hymn writing, because modern hymnists, well, there's not that many of them, right? So you get a couple great hymns a year, but with contemporary Christian music, you get a bunch of good songs, but with that, you also get a bunch of bad songs, right? And you have to wade through the waters of what's good and what's bad and try to find the great ones, right? And the song that we chose for this week is a song called 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord. Anybody know this song? So you've sung it a uh, time or two at a different event, um, but if you don't know it, you're going to get to know it today. And so lots of contemporary songs don't feel like hymns, right? They're structured in a very, uh, a very different way. But this is one of the songs that does feel like a hymn. It's modern, but it does feel like a hymn because the melody is very hymn-like. It's singable. It's very easy to grab onto. And Cheryl's going to play that first melody for us. off of these words, the sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. You may be thinking, where does this idea come from? This idea of singing a song to God. Well, the truth of the matter is it's littered all through the Psalms, right? The Psalms are the original hymnal. And it's all about singing praise to God. And this piece comes directly from Psalm 59. But as for me, I shall sing of your strength. Yes, I shall joyfully sing of your loving kindness in the morning. For you have been my stronghold and my refuge in the day of my distress. And the verse continues on. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. And this part of the verse, it comes again from the Psalms, from Psalm 104 here. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. The truth of the matter is sometimes we hear words like this, we recite these scriptures, or we, even we sing these verses, and we love it, but the application is where it gets tricky, right? I will sing to the Lord for as long as I live, not just when I feel like it, not just when I like the song, not just when I have voice in my lungs, but for as long as I live, I will sing praise as long as I have my being. And then we find our way to the chorus, which is simple, elegant, and beautiful, beautiful right? It's very singable again, and that's one of the things that makes it holy. So Cheryl's gonna play the chorus piece for us. <laughs> And that's one of the things that makes it so singable. It's almost a call back there. And the lyrics kick off, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. And like most pieces of this song, it comes directly from the Psalms again, this time from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And the chorus concludes with sing like never before. O oh my soul, I worship his holy name. And this time we get Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. And I've said it many, many times, 
that most songs have some type of drop off in the verses, right? And luckily for you, that we pick songs during this sermon series that don't have that drop off from verse to verse. And this is another one of the songs that really doesn't have a drop off. All the verses are equally good. But for time's sake, we'll jump to verse 3. And the truth of the matter is, if there's going to be strong verses, they're going to be at the front and the end, right? The alpha and omega, beginning and end, right? It's intentional. And verse 3 kicks off with, And on that day, when my strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. It's one of those moments, right, where we're singing about the end of life. But it sounds so beautiful, we don't even recognize what we're singing. But that's what we're singing about here. And this time it comes from Psalm 73. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And then the verse continues on. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. And this piece it's broken up into two psalms. So the first comes from 89. I will sing of the loving kindness of the Lord forever. To all generations, I will make known your faithfulness with my mouth. And also from Psalm 5. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. And may you shelter them, that those who love your name may exult in you. And there's two scriptures in all of this psalm that stand out. Scriptures that are touched on, but may not be directly quoted. And I want you to hear these. The first uh, comes from Psalm of 30. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosened my sackcloth and girded me with gladness that my soul may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. My second scripture is from Ephesians chapter 5. And speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. That's our call, my friends. In this moment and all the moments to come that we might make a melody in our hearts that sings to God. Can you close your eyes for me? just want to sit in this moment. Sit in reverence of the wonder of God. That we might truly let these words in this scripture speak over us. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh, my soul. I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, O oh, my soul, worship his holy name and sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great in your heart, God. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing 10,000 reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul sings your praise unending. 10,000 years, and then, forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. 
My friends, our greatest moments are moments that we've allowed to be. Not moments that we built from the ground up with the perfect playlist, the most ideal thing, the best food, the best experience, the best atmosphere. Just moments where we were free to be our true selves, where we were free to be vulnerable, present, and alive. And in that space, in that freedom of being our true and authentic selves, we allow God to dwell with us. And if our praise to God is wrapped up in pursuit of an experience for ourselves, then that praise is selfish and insufficient. Music bridges the gap between our spirits and God, that we might surrender in an authentic and holy way that we might worship the Lord from the depths of our hearts and connect with the entirety of our souls, that we might learn to chase after God instead of just chasing experiences. Because in the midst of our pursuit of God, we always find God. And in our surrender to God, we find ourselves And speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. My friend, you've been invited in this moment to dwell with God. But it's up to you to fill out the RSVP. So what's it going to be? Going to be yes? Is it going to be no? Or is it going to be maybe? Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God, that it is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture, and enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations.